invested $20,000 this week into a tiny crypto project that I believe is set to double in value in the short term and will allow me to turn my $20,000 into $40,000 or more. In this video, I'm going to share what this project is. And as a spoiler, it is something that I have talked about quite a bit before. Why specifically I'm confident enough to bet $20,000 because I believe in the short term this project is undervalued and will double in size and how I've been passively making over $1,000 a month from this project for months now. And I think as soon as I say the name of this project, I'm going to have a lot of people that are going to immediately dismiss it. And that's because a lot of people don't fundamentally understand this project at all. And if that's you, all I ask is that you just hear me out. You just hear my case. You hear the facts, the evidence that I'm about to present, and then you make your judgment. $20,000 in the middle of a, the bear market is a lot of money to me, okay? Uh, you might not think, hey, that's a lot of money because I've done stupid things in the past and lost money during the bull market, but that was during the bull market. This is the bear market, okay? I've been actually pretty, uh, you know, frugal with my investments during the bear market. There's a reason that I was able to hang on to the million dollars I made during the bull market in the bear market. That's because I've been really conservative with my investments and I've stuck to my risk management principles. And uh, I drive one car, okay? I have a minivan, that's all. We, me and my wife would love a second vehicle. That We like dream about having a second vehicle. It is not necessarily always easy having just one vehicle and $20,000, that's enough to get another vehicle or, you know, it's enough to do a lot of crazy fun stuff. And instead of doing those things, I'm making this play. So I obviously must have some sort of reasoning or conviction that I'm making this play that is pretty substantial to me. And all I ask is that you just hear me out. And after you hear my case, if you think I'm crazy and just nuts, that's fine. You know, you can sit back, you can sip on your little uh, lemonade or whatever you sip on when you watch these videos. And you can just wait a couple months, uh, you know, wait five, six months, whatever, and, and see what happens. And then laugh at me if I'm wrong. Because you know what? I am wrong sometimes. I'm not infallible. I could definitely be wrong. I'm definitely not saying that I couldn't be wrong. I'm just saying I have a compelling case. I have a compelling argument. Just hear me out. That's all I ask. The project I'm talking about is Sphere. The project that I've been talking about for ages now that is down 90% from its all-time high. And depending on if and where you bought in, you either love or hate Sphere. I'm in the love it category because I bought Sphere on public launch, but I bought it on launch day. And I'm only down about 40%, which is about the same had I invested in Bitcoin at that exact on that exact same day. If I had stuck my money in Bitcoin and I stuck it in Sphere, I'd have been I'd be down about the exact same amount. And I only put $3,500 into Sphere. So I'm only down about $1,500 dollars, which isn't like the end of the world to me. But obviously a lot of other people piled in after the price of Sphere spiked up. They bought, you know, as it was going up and they lost a lot of money along the way because they kind of followed the masses. And investing is always about buying in before the masses arrive, not after. That's why the bear market is such a huge opportunity because nobody's paying attention. Nobody's buying. The masses aren't here. So you can go and you buy crypto and you can invest before the masses arrive. But what most people are going to do is they're going to wait until the masses get here. The price skyrockets. They're going to buy the top. And then when it collapses, and they lose a bunch of money, they're gonna blame everyone else but themselves. Anyway, since then though, I've added quite a bit of sphere into my portfolio during the bear market. And I kept accumulating for a couple key reasons. And just to be clear, this video is not about me trying to convince you to buy into sphere. This is a video to document a high conviction bet and play that I'm making so that if I end up being right, I can point back to this video to prove a point. And that's that when it comes to investing, information and understanding is just a ridiculously overpowered unfair advantage because for anyone who has the full picture and can see what sphere is doing and what's currently happening this is one of the easiest and most obvious plays in the space currently sphere basically started out as pretty much a dgen project it was launched during the decline of dgen season when some of the biggest projects were basically giant tokenomics experiments trying to perform some sort of digital alchemy so that they could you know, generate perpetual passive income forever for all of their holders for all time. And Sphere was really no different at first glance. It was a rebasing project with a really high APY and a buy and sell tax. But if you dug into their documentation, you would read that these tokenomics and the way that they had set up this project was only a temporary solution to bootstrap the protocol so that they could build their, you know, actual vision they wanted to build. And through this whole bootstrapping process, they were able to raise millions of dollars in capital and they got to work building. The problem was for them that all of this happened during the decline of basically the crypto market when the entire crypto market 
started collapsing in on itself. Just a couple months after Sphere launched, Luna collapsed, UST collapsed, and the entire crypto market just cratered. And if you've never experienced a crypto winner before, it basically goes like this, like usually like the big blue chip crypto projects, they'll like decline by like 70 to maybe 90%. And then the smaller cap crypto projects, they usually decline by like 90 to 99.999%. Sphere though, they just kept building regardless of you know the market and what was going on, and they started putting their vision into action. And their vision was basically to build complex crypto projects to serve the DeFi space. The first thing Sphere did was they removed rebasing, which is a great mechanic for bootstrapping a protocol, but a horrible long-term mechanic for a protocol because it causes this heavy dilution, which eventually kind of like causes the price to slowly get pushed down over time. They also put all the capital that they had raised to work, earning revenue via yield farming. And then they launched their first two protocols. The first one was called Penrose. The second one was called Unknown. Both were really hyped. The Sphere community was really excited about them, but they both essentially ended up completely flopped. And my take was essentially they were both great products for the market. The problem is they were built on two other protocols that didn't end up doing very well. It's sort of like when a good project launches on a chain that essentially nobody uses, so they don't end up getting any adoption. They launched these products they had built on top of two different DEXs that didn't really gain much adoption. Regardless, Sphere kept building and launched their third product called Dyson. Dyson essentially took everything that they learned from their past two failures, and instead of building a liquid wrapper solution on top of just one DEX, they had built a general liquid wrapper solution that any DEX could use. And if you don't understand any of that, it really doesn't matter. The point is that they launched a product that was a success that ended up generating even more revenue for Sphere. And along with the launch of Dyson came the removal of buy and sell taxes on Sphere and the introduction of something called YL Sphere. And this part is actually pretty significant because it forms sort of the backbone of why I made this $20,000 bet, which I'll explain soon, but to kind of understand it first, you got to understand what YL Sphere is. YL Sphere allows Sphere holders to lock their Sphere on Dyson in exchange for real yield from Sphere's various revenue sources. Which by the way, Sphere holds $13 million in their treasury and they're actively farming out that treasury to produce yield. And that's where a good portion of the revenue comes from. As well as obviously Dyson is a revenue source and they have others as well. The important part though is that while Sphere's yield comes from real revenue generated by the protocol. And the rewards you earn from locking your Sphere is in things like Matic, USDC, and other blue chip assets like that. And the yield you earn doing this is actually pretty insane. At the time of writing, it's around 22%. Meaning if I take $20,000 and lock it, I can make around $360 in passive income a month. Paid out in things like Matic and USDC, and again, all from real revenue sources. And if I lock something as high as $100,000, I can make $1,800 a month in passive income. So as far as yield goes, that's pretty substantial. And I personally earn around $1,000 a month from my wild sphere. So sphere is basically a value accrual token that allows you to earn real yield in Matic and other blue chip assets that comes from real sustainable revenue sources, as well as Sphere is directly tied to the Sphere Treasury. The Sphere Treasury grows in value because of things like Dyson, Prion, and other protocols that Sphere has in the works. These various protocols feed revenue into the Sphere Treasury, growing it over time. Currently, the total market cap for Sphere at the time of me recording this is around $7 million. And here's why I think that's set to double at a bare minimum in the short term. First up, as we've noted, Sphere holds $13 million in assets in its treasury, and it's nonsensical for it to trade under $13 million. That'd essentially be like if I had a briefcase and I asked you to tell me how much you thought this briefcase was worth. And I told you that at a bare minimum, for sure, there was at least $13 million in this briefcase, but there could be 50 million, there could be 100 million, there could be a billion dollars in this briefcase, but at a bare minimum, for sure, there was $13 million. And you told me that you thought that that briefcase was only worth $7 million. Obviously, that's a nonsense response. You can't say, hey, that briefcase is only worth $7 million when it holds at a bare minimum, $13 million in it. At the very least, you would say the briefcase is worth $13 million. But again, it could be worth a lot more in the future as time goes on. And that's essentially what the market is saying about Sphere right now. It's saying, hey, uh, this, this project that has $13 million in assets in their treasury is only worth $7 million. Obviously, that doesn't make sense. We have projects that don't have any assets. They don't have any revenue. The, 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 the market values it like a billion dollars. So the fact that you have a, a project has $13 million in its treasury and you're valuing it only 7 million, not accounting for the protocol revenue, not accounting for future growth. That's absolutely insane. And that's the first reason why I think currently the protocol is undervalued and why it's set to at least double. But that's not even really the big reason why I am making this bet and why I think it's set to double in value in the short term. The big reason has to do with an upcoming change in how YL Sphere works. Currently, like I said, YL Sphere pays out rewards in Matic and USDC. Soon though, it's gonna pay out rewards in Sphere as 
well. But this won't be newly printed sphere. So it's not gonna be like inflationary where the protocol is generating and printing new sphere to pay out these rewards. Instead, this sphere is going to be bought on the open market. Remember, all the yield that's paid out to while sphere lockers comes from real revenue sources. So what they're going to do is they're gonna take the yield from those real revenue sources, the, the Matic that they earn, the USDC that they earn as the protocol. And they're gonna use that to on the open market, go and buy sphere. And then they're gonna take that sphere and they're gonna reward it to the while sphere stakers as something called vested sphere. This is similar to something like ESGMX if you're familiar with how GMX works. Basically, it just means that the person that receives this sphere can't just turn around and sell it. Instead, they're given three different options. Option number one, they can vest the sphere for 21 weeks, meaning they'll lock it up for 21 weeks. They will not earn any rewards on it, but at the end of the 21 weeks, it'll turn into normal sphere and then they can go and sell it. Very similar to how vested GMX works, only with GMX, obviously you gotta lock it for an entire year and you don't earn rewards on it and then you can take your GMX and sell it. Option number two, they can take that vested sphere and they can vest it for a shorter period than 21 weeks, but depending on how short they wanna make that, a portion of their sphere gets permanently burned. So say they want it like, they're like, hey, I want this in a week or I want this in like five days. They could do that, but they're gonna lose most of that vested sphere they earned and the portion that they lose is going to be permanently burned and removed from the market. And option number three is they can instantly take that vested sphere and convert it into wild sphere, locking it up for 17 weeks, but they're able to earn rewards off this vested sphere during that uh, 17 week period. Now under this scenario, they haven't defined exactly how this will work. In my head, it makes the most sense that if they were to take the vested sphere and lock it up as wild sphere for that 17 week period, when it unlocks, it should remain vested sphere. But they haven't said that outright. They, they haven't said if it'll turn into normal sphere when it unlocks, if it'll turn uh, back into vested sphere. In my case, the most bullish scenario is that when it's locked and unlocks, it's still vested sphere so that people still can't sell it. They can just earn rewards off of it. And if they really wanna sell it, they're gonna have to go invest it in order to do it, which is gonna really just take a lot more sphere over time off the market and create a lot less selling pressure. It doesn't really matter either way for my bet, but again, I just think that the, the most bullish scenario would be that that vested sphere remains vested sphere, because again, that's just taking more sphere off the market and reducing the amount of sell pressure Pressure that can come from these rewards. So that essentially, just like ESGMX, more and more sphere comes off the market and the price is able to steadily appreciate. Okay, so you're probably wondering though, why am I so convinced that specifically this is going to make the price climb? Well, right now, if you were to go and try to buy a thousand dollars worth of sphere, you would notice that immediately after you bought that thousand dollars worth of sphere, you will see a small candle on the sphere chart because it impacts the price that much. When I went and bought just a thousand dollars worth of sphere on my own, I noticed it impacted not only the market cap, but the price pretty substantially for how small of a buy that I was making. You know, if I were to go buy a thousand dollars worth of ETH, it wouldn't do anything. If I were to buy a hundred thousand dollars worth of ETH, it wouldn't do anything to the price. But Sphere has pretty low liquidity. Its liquidity is only around six hundred thousand dollars. So small buys and sells impact the price pretty significantly. So what do you think is going to happen when they make this switch with Wild Sphere and the protocol starts taking its revenue and buying Sphere off the open market? Even if they were to switch just fifty percent of the rewards to Sphere, that should create pretty consistent and pretty decent buy pressure on the price of Sphere. And again. Keep in mind, this is one way buy pressure because all of this sphere that gets rewarded to holders is going to be vested sphere. So they can't just go and sell this sphere without vesting it for 21 weeks and earning no reward. On top of all that, Sphere is also about to launch their brand new protocol called Prion. Prion is aimed at disrupting the CDP sector of DeFi. Think of protocols like MakerDAO, which at its height had a market cap of over $5 billion. Maker is the protocol that created the DAI stablecoin. And the way it works is that users lock assets such as ETH into a debt position to mint DAI. Meaning DAI represents essentially a decentralized loan of sorts. And Maker currently makes around $370 million in revenue from this whole operation. Similarly, Prion would have its own stable coin that it's able to mint called Star. There's a lot more to this protocol and some really interesting concepts that could end up being pretty disruptive to this entire sector, but that gives you the general gist of, of what Prion is. And the Sphere Treasury will be allocated a portion of Prion's tokens on launch, and fees will feed back into the Sphere Treasury via Prion's integration with Dyson. And again, a portion of that revenue that's coming back into Sphere is going to be used to buy Sphere on the open market, even further pushing up the price of Sphere. And this isn't even all that's being built. There is so much more that is being built. This is just the current things that are happening in the short term that I'm really excited about. But all of that put together is for me, one of the big reasons why this is one of the easiest plays I've seen in a long time. 
and why I'm betting $20,000 that the price will double in value from here. I'm still, of course, long-term bullish on Sphere as well for those reasons and others, but this is more me trying to highlight one specific short-term play because of the current state of Sphere. And like I said earlier, my aim is definitely not to convince anyone else to try to make the same play on Sphere. This is just me documenting a fun experiment for my YouTube channel. I am just doing the type of things YouTubers do. That does not mean that you should copy me. I could, of course, be wrong. I could, of course, be missing something, and this could end up being a disaster. I don't personally think that I'm wrong, but I could be and I have been wrong in the past. You should always do your own research and never just blindly copy somebody on YouTube. As always, if this video was helpful or interesting to you, make sure to hit that like button. If you have anything that you feel like I missed or you, anything you want to add, or maybe some other projects that you think are a really great short-term play, let me know in the comments below. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the little bell next to it if you want to be notified each time I release a new video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.